Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Today we're going to write the Hello World program in the mainframe assembler. Uh, assembler has been traditionally a very important language uh, within the mainframe environment, much more so than assembler on things like uh, the Unix and Linux platforms or Windows where I, I know maybe I know one person today who still codes in Assembler on Windows, but for the most part, you really never go back to Assembler um, on Windows and, and Linux unless you really have to do something very specific. Whereas on the mainframe, Assembler is kind of like C in Linux and C in Windows. Uh, certain things you kind of have to do in C on those platforms, and on the mainframe, certain things you really have to do in Assembler to do them well or to be able to do them at all. And so Assembler has, um, has always had a very important role in the mainframe. Uh, uh, of course, every platform always comes out with an assembler first, and so the same for the mainframe uh, when it came out in 1965. Uh, there's been several versions of the assembler um, all through what we know today as the high-level assembler. And uh, there's a very important book here by uh, John Ehrman, rest in peace, who passed away last year, uh, who's, uh, who is the person who promoted the new version called the high level the IBM high level assembling assembly language HLASM and wrote this amazing book I mean this is the best way to learn assembler for, I think for any platform really so do you sell I'm going to post the post the link to this uh, to this book uh, below um, in the description below this video make yourself in favor and go study a little bit of that book even if you only re read the first 40 pages you'll learn a lot about computers that you didn't even know were um, was was out there so let's go and write a program i have here um an empty job control language to process uh, a an assemble program it's going to be a assemble compile link and go so we're going to assemble and uh, and and execute and um I'll usually in assembly you don't need to link uh, if, if unless you have other modules but um uh, here's the procedure um, that you'll find on any ZOS mainframe. So this comes delivered with the operating system. And then all you need to provide is if you have any libraries. I have some copy books where I have some stuff in there. So I always put that in. I do a quite, a, quite a bit of uh, assembly programming myself. But the program we're going to write today is going to be in the most uh, simple assembler possible so assembler that would have run even 50 years ago and i know some people will say hey this is not there's far more uh, uh, modern instructions that you could use yes but i use the old one so it would run equally well on zos or on the mvs um, operating system that we have in the community um, through the distribution called tk4 which uh, you should go and uh, download if you haven't played with it yet so then we have an output card this is how i want to look we could just say sys out uh, equals star asterisk, but I want to make it look like this. And then here is going to go our um, assemble program. Then whenever you do assemble programming, you're going to go and have a bends. A bends means abnormal ends. And when a, when the program abnormal ends, it will dump the uh, so the contents of the address space. And so you should always have this line here so you can go and debug. Alrighty, so let's do some programming. Um, I want to do is uh, first of all I uh, always start with uh, saying that I do want um, print on I want all the macros to be expanded okay then we say here the program is going to be called hello and we say uh, the code section starts here then here we have a macro which says save all the registers on entry. In the IBM mainframe convention, it's the responsibility of each program to save the registers of the caller and then to reinstate the registers of the caller just before exiting and then returning to the caller. So that's the convention. And if you don't do it, bad things will, are gonna happen. So then we store all, all the um, so all the uh, the, um, the registers. Now the assemb the mainframe is also by convention relative addressing, meaning that you always um, address everything relative to the beginning of your program, and you need to have one register which is going to be the relative address um, constant within the code. 
Uh, I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, so let's store register 13 in the save area that I'm going to create. Save area. I'm going to say we only need 18 full words. words. And I think that's pretty much it. So at this point, we need to equate uh, the normal convention in the assembler is to just write the assembler, the register number, but to make it more readable, most people write it like this, register 12, which means you need to go and equate all your uh, registers. So usually I do it like this, R0 equates to zero. Uh, so that if I write register zero, the assembler will substitute it for just zero. And we're going to go now and do repeat 15. And we're just going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 equals 16 registers. And so then we can do the same here. Copy this. Okay, so now we have the register equates. Adds just a lot of lines, but it makes the code much more readable. And so now that we store the registers there, we load the load address of register area. Okay, and now, hello, say it. Write to operator, hello world. Um, and then we just say, yeah, that's, that's how we're going to say it. Um, and then we load the register address of the save area plus four bytes down. And then we return by first restoring the registers and setting the return code to zero. And then we have the literal pool in case we had any use of that and I think uh, that's pretty much it so this is the very simple program so what we do here is we say expand all the macros um, which we're using a few like WTO off and then we, this is the beginning of the code section we save all the registers from 12 all the way through 14 and then we use register 12 from here on as the relative addressing register then um, um, store register 13 in the, in the save area, which is an area of memory. And, um, and then we load and register 13 in the save area address. Then we'll just write hello world. And then we'll just restore the, the registers as they were before we were called, basically the, the call is registered. And, uh, and then we'll return. So let's try to give this an exit. Um, Let's call it for high level assembly. We are on ZOS here. And let's go to the look at the output. Um, I think we're dumping. Yes. And that is a very typical occurrence. So in, invalid instruction. So we have an invalid instruction somewhere. That's what 0C1 means, a bent code. So it's good, we, um, that's why it took so long, it produced 29,000 records of dump, um, of the address space dump. It will also tell us where um, the problem was. Um, this is the program status world, the, basically the state of the processor when this happened. The, the instruction that caused it was two bytes long and um, and this is where this happened, okay, at this address. So we could now go, which you see here, this is very similar to this, register 12. Okay, so something happened here. Uh, let's go see. So it happened within the address space, which... So this is the full output of the dump of the, of the address space that caused the problem. Um, See what happened here? Yeah, you see here um, we have, oh, okay, so we're missing in our 
JCL, the um, the link to the macro library. So that's what caused it. So. And then you just say dd include the Mac library. Okay. Run this again. Trespace 1685, job uh, 1685. And it looks like it's dumping again. Let's see why it's dumping this time. Same problem again, right, but now we have even more. So now we found the uh, macros, but there's an, oh yeah. So this is what's, what's causing it. So just typing a little bit too fast. Where is it? Okay, save area. So let's see now, submit job 1686. So when you write an assembler, uh, you're gonna have now and then events, it's just, not be avoided um, here it is so this time it didn't bend so much better uh, there's a bad character in operation code and okay it didn't like this thing here so we can also just remove this 1687 and this time it went through so let's go look at it Yes, no problems. This went through. So now if we go to the log, we should see here somewhere, hello world. Let's go, this is the log of the, of the whole mainframe. We'll write mm, 15, which um, were 60, hello world, here it is. Okay, <laughs> that's what it takes in the mainframe world. We could also print it, uh, write, write it to the printer. That would be another way, but th this is the shortest Hello World program. We could even do away with all this if we just used the registers without the equates, just uh, normal numbers without the R in front of it. Then we would save another 16 lines. But by writing it to the operator console, this went to the operator console that you see here. By writing to the operator console, we, we made this program much much shorter and so uh, here it is so your hello world where is it again I just love here it is so here's the output from this program this output program here produced this output the plus means there was a message to the console of the operator in the mainframe there there's an operator with that sits usually close to the machines um, and uh, and programs write to the console when they need something in a tape or special forms to be loaded into the printers or anything like that. So you wouldn't want to spam the operator with too many of these messages, but this is indeed the shortest possible Hello World program that I can think of. We could also do away with a lot of the register handling because um, if we want it to be less formal, I guess we could save a few more lines there. But uh, I think this is the correct way to learn to program an assembler if you do save the registers properly and reinstate them when you exit. So this is it. Um, uh, now, this is um, using an assembler called uh, High Level Assembler, which we don't have in the, in the enthusiast community and the people who want to learn the, um, the IBM uh, mainframes. So that's why we have a petition running. Um, I will put the link in the description below this video where we uh, petition IBM uh, to uh, let us have MVSXA and VMXA, two operating systems in 31-bit mode, which means they can address up to two gigabytes of memory, together with the 31-bit compilers. So we can, uh, we can, people can be at home and uh, and play with those operating systems and learn the IBM uh, mainframe, RM, which is such an amazing environment. And uh, we have a very strong community on this channel with almost 2,000 people subscribing. And we have a page on Facebook and uh, we have mailing lists and, and even a chat um, on Discord, uh, although I don't remember the address of it. But uh, please um, uh, post comments what you think about Assembler, what you think about other languages, what languages you like, what languages you dislike. And um, always uh, interesting to read what people uh, think. 
and uh, do head over to sign the petition. Thank you very much for watching this video and goodbye.